Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. The functionally generated registration we obtained incorporates complete functional jaw movements under actual working conditions by the patient. If we seat the prosthesis containing this wax registration on the corrected master cast, sticky wax it in place, box or enclose the registration itself, and pour an improved stone into that boxed registration, we can produce a positive template of that negative record. Then, if we mount this entire ensemble, unseparated, on a hinge articulator, we can retain that relationship and can set artificial teeth to that template. Since the facets on the registration were cut by the patient, they represent the exact range, depth, and individualistic character of his jaw movements. The surface tracings were made in the wax by the movement of the teeth against the occlusal wax and include all possible movements of these teeth. When artificial teeth are set to that template, produced from the registration, the artificial teeth should be in complete harmony in any position to which the jaw may move with the teeth which produced the wax negative. Therefore, the effectiveness or value of the functional registration of occlusal pathways depends upon the accurate formation of a template from that registration and the setting of the artificial teeth to that template. If the base of the corrected master cast was not keyed, this must be done before proceeding. Reduce the thickness of the base to about one half inch and create a 45 degree bevel completely around the base of the cast. This bevel should be very distinct and prominent. Also, cut distinct notches on three sides of the cast in that bevel. These keys allow for remounting the cast for correction of post-processing errors. Clean the framework, the base, and the cast of all particles of wax, debris, stone, block up material or anything which might prevent seating the, the framework and the base on the cast accurately. Reseat the prosthesis on the cast accurately and sticky wax it in place to hold that position. The prosthesis must be accurately fixed to the corrected master cast so you maintain the same relationship the prosthesis had in the patient's mouth. Next, we form a box or matrix of clay around the, around the wax occlusal record. You can take some clay, plasticine, something that's very pliable, and you should not use wax because you may introduce heat. A very soft, pliable clay should be used. Form this into a, a patty and roll it till it's about a quarter of an inch thick and then cut it into strips. The strips should be about an inch wide and about two to three inches long depending on the length of the base that you have to form this for. Take one of the strips and adapt it from the buckle so that it's approximately a half to three quarters of an inch above the wax registration. Take a second strip and form it from the lingual so that it joins the other strip in the anterior and the posterior region. Then seal that clay to the base or the cast with your fingers pinch it together the anterior and posterior region to join it and then by using a cold number seven spatula start to seal this clay to the peripheral edge of your wax registration. At the same time you are sealing this you can bevel it slightly away from the wax registration. You should also at this time include the occlusal rest and part of the occlusal surface 
of the primary abutment tooth, this will be one of the vertical stops in your finished mounting to maintain the correct vertical dimension. When we have finished sealing this wax, we will also form the same type of outline on a the bicuspid on this side to include the occlusal rest and part of the occlusal surface and the molar to include the occlusal rest and part of the occlusal surface. These will be the vertical stop areas in the finished mounting. The occlusal path registration has been completely boxed in with the clay to include the primary abutment tooth and occlusal rest on this side. We have also boxed in the indirect retainer site to include the occlusal rest and the other primary abutment tooth to include the occlusal rest. These three occlusal rests and abutment teeth will provide the vertical stops to maintain the correct vertical dimension in our finished mounting. When we are finished here, we will take some more clay and fill in or cover the tongue space to form a bridge between the two sides. We also take some clay and cover over the anterior teeth. We could use 28 gauge green wax for this, but the clay is a much easier medium to mold. When it's completed, the boxing clay should include the occlusal surfaces of the primary abutment teeth and other isolated teeth or parts of the cast to act as vertical stops. It should be no more than three quarters of an inch high. It should be sealed at the vertical turn of the wax record. It should also rise at a 45 degree angle from the edge of the vertical turn of the wax record and which should fill in the tongue space. When this has been done, we paint some debubbleizer on the occlusal rests and stone teeth to prevent the stone from adhering to this when we pour it and also some either debubbleizer or microfilm on the wax occlusal record to lower the surface tension before we pour up the stone. Inasmuch as all movements of the mandible, centric relation, centric occlusion, and all lateral and protrusive movements have been recorded in the wax and will be registered on the stone template formed from that wax record. An adjustable articulator is not necessary for this mounting. An adjustable articulator is usually set from the various records made on the patient. But inasmuch as the patient has chewed in a record of all of the possible movements of the mandible, other records are not needed and the articulator does not have to be set. Therefore, the articulator used for this procedure should be a hinge only. If an adjustable articulator, such as the Hanau, is used, be sure that all condyles and members are securely locked in the centric position and the incisal guide pin set on the incisal guide platform before mounting the occlusal path record. Do not use any articulator which cannot be securely locked in one position. A simple hinge articulator can be used if it can be locked. An articulator which uses a spring or anything else for joining the upper and lower member is an example of the type of articulator which should not be used. We have prepared a 100 gram mix of Velmix to the correct proportions and we very carefully vibrate this mix in to the occlusal path record and areas using a camel's hair brush to try to keep from incorporating any bubbles. Do this slowly and carefully to all the areas
And once we are sure that we have the path record and the occlusal surfaces of the teeth and occlusal rests covered, we can add a little bit more with a spatula to fill these boxed in areas. Do this very carefully. And once they are filled in, we add a few little knobs or uneven mounds of stone to these surfaces, just in case they set up too soon. And then add the remainder of our stone, our velmix, to the bridge that we have formed. And in this way, we actually form a Velmix template or bridge covering the occlusal path record and our vertical stop areas. Now once we have covered that or filled that area, we add some excess stone to form uneven knobs or mounds and these will provide the mechanical locking to our articulator plaster when we mount this in the future. Do not separate this assembly before you have mounted it on the articulator. The entire assembly must be mounted on the articulator as it is at this stage. The entire assembly has been mounted to the lower member of the articulator. During the mounting, be sure to lubricate the base of the corrected master cast with Vaseline so that we can remount this after processing and correct the post-processing errors. During the mounting with the plaster, be sure to check between the occlusal template surface and the upper member so that you have enough room for plaster to mount the upper or the occlusal template to the upper member. We will proceed now to mount the occlusal template to the upper member. For this, we do not lubricate this stone. Just mount it with plaster as is. After the mounting is completing and the plaster has set, we open the articulator carefully. The template should separate from the wax, a occlusal path easily. We want to remove all of the wax, not the, wa the clay, from your corrected master cast. Again, because this clay is very pliable and soft, it should come off very easily. If your master cast, your corrected master cast, separates from your mounting, that is no catastrophe because that is something that would have to be done later on when you remount for process for correction of processing errors. At this stage, remove your prosthesis. Because it was sticky waxed on, you have to remove that sticky wax. And close your mounting and check your stops. You can see the vertical stop on this primary abutment tooth where the occlusal template hits the primary abutment tooth. If we slowly turn the mounting around, you can also check the occlusal stops on the indirect retainer site where the stone of the template hits your primary abutment tooth there and also on the molar. You can see how closely the Velmix stone of the template mounting fits against the molar. Now our stops are okay so we will separate this again, open it up and using a scraper or a knife we'll trim away 
all the excess stone so that we can get a good view of the template itself. And use either a sharp scalpel or sharp knife or a scraper of some sort. We must see this template and the stops very, very well because we're going to set our artificial teeth to this template. Now at this stage you can see how this template looks. It's bubble free. We have the stops and it fits against the mandibular cast carefully. If the functionally generated path was obtained correctly and the occlusal template poured up correctly, the artificial teeth can be set, waxed, processed, the case remounted, and occlusal corrections made so that the completed prosthesis can be inserted at the next patient appointment. Therefore, the temporary resin basis should be removed from the prosthesis framework before proceeding. Temporary resin basis must not be left on any removable partial denture for the processing of bases. It is almost impossible to remove these bases from the flask case during the processing procedure. To remove the temporary bases, using a carbide acrylic burr, grind the tissue surface of the base right down to the resin retention lugs of the framework. We have removed the acrylic resin right down to the acrylic resin retention mesh of the framework, which you can see is exposed. Now we take an alcohol torch and carefully heat the metal of the retention mesh. We try to do this carefully so we do not burn or cause the acrylic resin to flame. Just heat the metal, and if we've done this correctly, the base should come right off very easily. Now we can remove the excess resin very carefully and now our framework is ready to be remounted and we can set the teeth and process our prosthesis. The functionally generated path represents each tooth in its three-dimensional aspect. The cast or template poured against this will resemble the opposing teeth that carved it, but it will be wider and longer because it represents those teeth in all extremes of movement. The recording of the generated path eliminates entirely the need for attempting to reproduce mandibular movements on an instrument. Since the teeth opposing the edentulous area develop the facets on the wax record, artificial teeth related to a template made from that wax record will be in harmonious relation to those opposing teeth in any mandibular position. The accurate formation of an occlusal template from the functionally generated path is of extreme importance in the treatment of the partially edentulous patient. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.